Good morning, everybody. We begin our worship with a brief order for confession and forgiveness. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for us, and for his sake forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Also with you. Almighty God, we thank you for planting in us the seed of your word. By your Holy Spirit, help us to receive it with joy, live according to it, and grow in faith and hope and love through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen.
morning. First reading today is from Isaiah chapter 55, verses 10 through 13. For as the rain and the snow come down from heaven and do not return there until they have watered the earth, making it bring forth and sprout, giving seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goes out from my mouth. It shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I purpose and succeed in the thing for which I sent it. For you shall go out in joy and be led back in peace. The mountains and the hills before you shall burst into song, and all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. Instead of the thorn, that sh instead of the thorn shall come up the cypress, instead of the briar shall come up the myrtle, and it shall be to the Lord for a memorial, for an everlasting sign that shall not be cut off. Please read Psalm 65 responsibly. You are to be praised, O God, in Zion. To you shall vows be fulfilled. Our sins are stronger than we are, but you blot out our transgressions. Awesome things will show us in your righteousness, O God of our salvation, O hope of all the ends of the earth and of the oceans far away. You still the roaring of the seas, the roaring of their waves, and the clamor of the peoples. You visit the earth and water it abundantly. You make it very plenteous. The river of God is full of water. You prepare the grain, for so you provide for the earth. You crown the year with your goodness, and your paths overflow with plenty. May the meadows cover themselves with flocks, and the valleys cloak themselves with grain. Let them shout for joy and sing. The second reading is from Romans chapter 8, verses 1 through 11. There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set you free from the law of sin and of death. For God has done what the law, weakened by the flesh, could not do, by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and to deal with sin. He condemned sin in the flesh, so that the just requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us, who walk not according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh, but those who live according to the Spirit set their minds on the things of the Spirit. To set the mind on the flesh is death, but to set the mind on the Spirit is life and peace. For this reason, the mind that is set on the flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law. Indeed, it cannot. And those who are in the flesh cannot please God. But you are not in the flesh. You are in the Spirit, since the Spirit of God dwells in you. Anyone who does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to him. But if Christ is in you, though the body is dead because of sin, the spirit is life because of righteousness. If the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies also through his spirit that dwells in you. Here ends the readings. of eternal life. Hallelujah, hallelujah. The Holy Gospel is written in Matthew chapter 13, beginning with the first verse. Glory be to you, O Lord. That same day, Jesus went out of the house and sat beside the sea. Such crowds gathered, great crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat there while the whole crowd stood on the beach. And he told them many things in parables, saying, Listen, a sower went out to sow, and as he sowed, some seeds fell on the path, and the birds came and ate them up. Other seeds fell on rocky ground, where they did not have much soil. They sprang up quickly, since they had no depth of soil. But when the sun rose, they were scorched, and since they had no root, they withered away. Other seeds fell among thorns, 
and the thorns grew up and choked them. Other seeds fell on good soil and brought forth grain, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. Let anyone with ears listen. Hear then the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what is sown in the heart. This is what was sown on the path. As for what was sown on rocky ground, this is the one who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet such a person has no root, but endures only for a while. And when trouble or persecution arises on account of the word, that person immediately falls away. As for what was sown among thorns, this is the one who hears the word, but the cares of the world and the lure of wealth choke the word, and it yields nothing. But as for what was sown on good soil, this is the one who hears the word and understands it, who indeed bears fruit and yields, in one case a hundredfold, in another sixty, and in another thirty. Here is the Holy Gospel. Praise to you, O Christ. Time for the children's sermon. <laughs> uh, okay, I'm going to find out. I asked Adi this before, and he said he's really good at it. Uh, and that is, can you pretend? Do you know how to pretend to do something? Well, perfect. Well, then I'm going to ask you to pretend this. Our parable is about a guy who is planting seeds. And so he would have a sling like this, and then he would just reach into the side of the sling, pull out a handful of seeds, and he would throw them out like this. He would spread them on the ground, and then those seeds hopefully would grow. So what I want you to do is to go... You can go down the congregation, you can go and throw seeds on people. Pretend you're throwing seeds like this and throw them. All right, okay, go, go throw some seeds. Make sure you, make sure you get Jerry. He needs seeds. And, and yeah, yeah, make sure, go over here, get some over on this side. Go, get some over here. There you go. Good toss, Oda. Oh, yeah, good toss. You got to blail it. Spread seeds over there. Get some way in the back. That's why they're sitting in the back. They need more seeds. Okay, come on forward. That's great, great job. Outstanding. You're very good at pretending. Now, what, what does that story mean, do you think? What does the seed represent? What do you think the seed is supposed to be in terms of our faith? Growth. Yeah, growth. Does the seed grow? Like when, when we, we get faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, does that seed grow? And does it produce um, grain? Which means, does it show up in the way we act around our family, the way we treat other people, what we do? Does that faith grow? And so the parable today is saying, you know, we got to get out there and sow the seed of God's love because it can really, sometimes it can really grow and do great things in people. So you're ready to do some sowing in your lives with good stuff about Jesus? Okay, great. That's it. Thanks. Good pretending, by the way.
the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. When the kids were little, they always liked to listen to stories, and we even got some of these things where you could record your own voice, and then the kids could turn the page, and it would be your voice reading the story. Got some of those for the grandkids a number of years ago. But when, when my kids were little, we had to do it the old-fashioned way. We had to you know, lay down to get them ready for bed, tell a story. We had to lay down and read the story. But if I wanted the kids to go to sleep faster, what I would do is I would turn out the lights and I would just make up stuff, make up stories. I know Deborah finds this hard to believe, that I'm making stuff up, but yeah, I would. And, uh, and, and the more boring the story would be, the faster they would fall asleep. But sometimes I wanted them to uh, get a point out of the story, you know, like there's the moral of the story is. And so I would tell a little different kinds of stories. They would stay awake for these. We had supper with my daughter and her family this week, and she remembered one of the stories very clearly that I told them. And here's what it was. Once upon a time, there was a young boy and his younger sister named Clinton Callie that went out, they saw that there was an old deserted house on the edge of town. They wanted to have an adventure. So they went to go look in the old house, just to look around. And when they were there, the basement door going down the steps was open, and there was kind of a light down there. And they went down the steps, and here was a creepy looking old guy with a lantern down there. And then they went down there and he said, you know what I can do with these hairy hands and these ruby red lips? And they ran out of the house, and they talked about it for a week. And then they said, I wonder if he's still there. Maybe we should go back and see. Maybe we shouldn't go back and see. I don't know. What do you think? Well, let's go back. We can always take off like we did last time. So they went, and sure enough, the door to the basement was open. They went down, and there was the same creepy old guy with the lantern. And he said, you know what I can do with these hairy hands and these ruby red lips? And the little boy turned around and said, no. What can you do with those hairy hands and those ruby red lips? And the old guy went, <laughs> and the moral of the story was many of the things that we fear are really no threat at all. We spend a lot of time fearing and worrying about things that are never going to happen. That's the moral of the story. Jesus told stories all the time. Scriptures tell us that Jesus never taught or preached publicly without a story an allegory, an example, a parable. Never taught without a story. So see, making up stories isn't that bad, Deborah. <laughs> but his stories are, are called, mostly they're called parables. And in confirmation class, we learned that a parable was an earthly story with a heavenly meaning. Jesus would take things that people were familiar with down here, like a lot of farm examples, like sheep and shepherds and vineyards and harvest and seeds and sowing and plowing and then there's other th daily things like losing coins and a, a son that doesn't get along with his father and you know different stuff that you see all the time and then Jesus would take these things and then he would tell the story in such a way that people would have to think about this a little bit and go wonder what that means Jesus parables were seemed simple and yet in some ways they were pretty complex and sometimes ambiguous. We weren't sure quite what, what that meant. That's why the disciples usually said, what, what did that parable mean? And then we had an explanation like we did in today's parable. So he would tell these parables, but most of the time he was telling them as a way of kind of shoving aside current notions that people had about God and who God could love and who he couldn't love and how God, what, had, what he had to do and what he couldn't do. Jesus kind of wanted to, to, to demolish some of those sort of uh, uh, legalistic thoughts that people had, especially the religious leaders that they had. And one Bible scholar that I read said that Jesus used parables the same way a construction crew uses a bulldozer and a wrecking ball. He used it to push aside current notions people had about God. He used it to smash long-held beliefs about what God had to do and what he couldn't do. And so today we have the parable of the sower of the seed. It's a familiar parable. And Jesus told this, and he said, there was a guy who went out to sow seed. Now he's, he's got, you know, like I told the kids, he's got a sling, 
and he's, he's broadcast seating like this. He doesn't have a, a, a drill and he's not you know, putting it, he's just casting it out on, on plowed ground. And so there he is. And some of the seed, as he's sowing, some of it fell on the path. And the birds came and ate it. It never even germinated. It's just gone. And some of it fell on some pretty rocky ground. It, it germinated. It came up. But as soon as the sun came out and it got hot, it wilted because it had no depth of root. That was it. And some of the seed fell on thorns and weeds. It's, it uh, germinated and sprang up too. But then it got choked out by those of you who have gardens know what weeds can do to choke out your, your crops. And then, then some soil was really good soil. And some of it yielded 30-fold and 60-fold and 100-fold. This parable answers the question, why is it that some people hear the word of God and, they don't, and it doesn't go anywhere? They don't grow from it and nothing seems to happen. What, why is that? And so Jesus explained that to the disciples. He said, well, the seed that fell in the path is people whose heart is so hard that nothing's going to penetrate. It never even gets, or they're just, uh, don't bother me with the facts, my mind's made up. No. And the seed that falls on the rocky ground is people who are kind of excited. They have what my dad used to call two big ones. They get excited for a little bit. But then stuff happens and persecutions or hardships come. Up. Well, I'm not going to be a Christian if that's, you know, if you're still going to have bad stuff happen, what's the point of being a Christian? And so then they, they fall, they wilt. And the seed that falls among the thorns are people that, that it, it starts out and they get excited. And they're all right for a little while. But then there's so many other things that are going on. There's so many other things you can do on a Sunday morning. There's so many other things that you'd like to do that are, may not be the nicest, but they, they look like fun. The pleasures of this world choke it out after a while. And then there's the seed that falls on the good ground. In Jesus' parables, there is usually something that's surprising about it. And you may not have caught that in this parable, but I'll tell you what it is. The surprising factor in this parable is the yield that the seed gets on good ground. This, I mean, you know, so in Indiana, uh, this would be wheat or barley. This isn't corn. Corn is a new world uh, crop. This would be wheat or barley in, the, in Palestine. And wheat, uh, if you get a, a hundredfold yield, and you have to do the math to be impressed by this, if you got a hundredfold yield on your wheat, See, we sow about two and a half bushels of wheat to the acre in Indiana. And a, and a, a hundredfold yield would be, do the math, 250 bushels to the acre. If you got 250 bushels of the acre wheat, you'd be on the cover of successful farming for sure. You'd be in all the farm magazines. And even if you had 60, that'd be pretty good. Even 30 would be about, what, 75 bushels to the acre? And in Palestine, in an arid country, they'd have taken that, 75 bushel acre. Maybe not in Indiana, we wouldn't be that impressed with that. It's, you know, it's, okay, marginal. But in, in Palestine, that would have been tremendous, even 30 bushel the acre. So the point of that is to say, you know, seed that falls on good ground can do tremendous things. People's lives can be totally turned around and changed, and they can do great stuff. Now, when I was younger, I used to kind of think and look around and say, who are the people that, you know, the seed fell in the path? Oh yeah, there's that hard-hearted guy. Uh, he never, he's, it doesn't matter what you say to him, it's not gonna get through, forget it. And, and there's, there's a gal I know, oh, she was all excited for a little bit, but you know, as soon as the first bad thing happened, well, forget it, I'm not a Christian. And there's another, there's another guy over there, and he, he was all fired up about Christianity, but you know, there's a, there's a lot of golf that needs to be played on Sunday morning, and, you know, there's a lot of women that need to be taken out, and there's, you know, just, you just, you gotta, you, there's stuff out there that kind of chokes it out. And then there's people that I saw, like, I can't believe how much growth they've made. It's just tremendous faith in the things they do to help other people. It's just amazing. Yeah, I looked at other people and picked out the soil types uh, of all those folks. And then I started thinking, you know what? I've been all those soil types. I have been hard-hearted. Can't tell me anything. I have been shallow. Got excited and then forget about 
I have been distracted, choked out. And sometimes I've done some faithful things. I've been all those four types of soil. And what's worse than that, I've been all four types of soil, sometimes on the same day. And so Jesus was saying, you never know. You never know when you sow the seed. You never know what's going to happen. Now this sower could have been more selective than he was. I mean, he's not using a 24-row John Deere planter. He could have been a little more selective. He's sprinkling by hand. He, but he, he's throwing it on the path and in the rocks and the thorns. He's sloshing it around like LBJ at a barbecue. He doesn't seem to care, you know, where he's throwing his seed. And the great thing is, we don't have to care either. Our job is not to go out and be agronomists and test the soil and find out what, you know, what's out there. Our job is to sow the seed. Just sow the seed. God will yield the increase. If God wants to, we can sow seed in that parking lot and it'll grow a heck of a crop of wheat. Got a crop of grass coming now. So, you know, it could be possible. Just sow the seed. I remember um, sowing the seed about recovery is a, is a similar uh, topic when I worked at the drug alcohol unit. And I met a woman out in the parking lot at the hospital. She says, hey, Cal, you remember me? I'm like, oh, yes, unfortunately I do. Uh, and she said, hey, I've been clean and sober, continuously clean and sober for 15 years now. And I went, really? <laughs> because she was a pill in treatment, I'll tell you. I didn't think she'd make it out of the parking lot before she was doing dope. And she said she'd been clean and sober for 15 years. It's amazing what the seed can do and how it can grow sometimes. So our job is not to go out there and, you know, do soil testing everywhere. Well, we want to be efficient and effective. We don't want to waste the seed. Apparently, there's enough seed of God's word of love and grace and forgiveness that we can throw it anywhere we want. Our job is just get out there and sow the seed of God's love. Amen. Now may the peace of God, which pass all understanding, keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. 
He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Confident that God receives our joys and concerns, let us offer our prayers for the church, those in need, and all of creation. Guide your church, O God, to sow seeds of forgiveness and righteousness on good soil. Direct your people to proclaim your love in this congregation and throughout the world. Hear us, O God. Sustain your creation, O God, by sending favorable weather, causing trees and fields to grow, protecting waterways from pollution, and instilling in all people the need to be good stewards. Hear us, O God. Maintain peace among all people. O God, raise up lawyers to work for justice in the courts, advocates to speak for the downtrodden, and politicians to work on behalf of the common good. Hear us, O God. Heal those who are sick, O God. We pray especially for Connie Kaniga, Jean Herrick, Richard Howard, and Ralph Gross, and the family of Chris Haynes. Guide health care workers to care for those who suffer, scientists to conduct life-saving research, and counselors to care for the victims of sexual abuse and exploitation. Hear us, O God. Answer the prayers of those gathered in worship, O God. Protect those who travel near and far, accompany visitors to this congregation, and nurture our faith. Hear us, O God. Inspire us by the faithful departed, O God, examples of your embodied love, whose confidence in the resurrection guides us in living lives worthy of the gospel. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Into your hands, O God, we commend all for whom we pray, in the name of the one who reconciled all creation to himself, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. could have all of the new officers and the old officers please come forward Takes a while for these old officers, doesn't it? <laughs> Dear brothers and sisters, you have been elected in a regular meeting of this congregation as members of the church council, and as such, you are to be associated with me, the appointed minister of the word, in the work of upbuilding the kingdom of God. You are to see that services are held regularly, administer the temporal affairs of the congregation, assist the pastor, and in general, seek the welfare of the congregation. In order then that this congregation may be assured of your willingness to serve, I ask you in the presence of God and of this congregation, will you diligently and faithfully perform the duties of your office in conformity with the ordinances of God, the confessions of our church and the constitution of this congregation according to the ability that God gives you? If so, answer yes with the help of God. We therefore take occasion in the name of the congregation to tender our hearty thanks to those brothers and sisters who in the past have served as members of the church council. That would be Bethany and Marilyn. And we look forward to those of you who are serving in the future, which would be, let's see, Donna is, uh, what is Donna? Well, she's worship, okay. I used to know. 
I used to know all that stuff. Uh, <laughs> Becky is uh, social ministries. Stephanie is evangelism. And David is president. Sean is vice president. And Carol is secretary. Andrea is um, stewardship. And these two are nothing anymore. <laughs> they, are, they, are, they are in the past. And so uh, I, I welcome all of you to do these duties in the church in the name of the congregation. And thank those of you who did work in the past. Thank you. That's it. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Serve the Lord.